We're going to look at one uh, th linear programming problem, but we should emphasize the fact that a solution exists, if a solution exists to a bounded linear programming problem, then it occurs at one of the corner points. Remember, bounded means that if I draw a, a region, and that region I could let loose a, a wild animal, and that wild animal could never get out of there, then that's co considered a bounded region. Now, a region like this is not considered bounded because the animal could escape this way. Uh, bad, bad, bad analogy, but uh, hopefully that makes the point. So an airline offers coach and first class tickets. For the airline to be profitable, it must sell a minimum of 25 first class tickets and a minimum of 40 coach tickets. The company makes a profit of $225 for each coach ticket and $200 for each first class ticket. At most, the plane has a capacity of 150 travelers. How many of each ticket should be sold in order to maximize profit? Okay, um, this is a problem from the book. Uh, so first of all, I'm gonna go ahead and use X and Y in this case because it's a little bit easier for uh, some people to, to work with those. So let X equal the, we'll call those the number of coach tickets, um, the number of coach tickets and Y equal number of first class tickets. Okay, well then we have some constraints. So we know it must sell a minimum of 25 first class tickets. So that means Y has to be at least 25 or bigger. X has to be at least 40 or bigger. Um, the company makes a profit of 225 for each coach ticket and 200 for each first class ticket. Kind of a contradictory, isn't it? So 225 times the number of coach tickets sold plus 200 times the number of first class tickets sold um, is how we get our profit. Okay, well we want to maximize that so this guy must be our grand objective function. This is what we want to make as big as humanly possible. And we have one more constraint. At most, the plane has a capacity of 150 travelers. So the number of first class plus the number of, of coach has to be uh, less than or equal to 150. Um, so we know that that's going to be the case. OK, well, if we begin to graph this and we look at x, the number of coach, and y, the number of first class, then y has to be greater than or equal to 25. So up here somewhere, there's 25 and we need to be upwards in this region. X has to be greater than or equal to 40, so that means we're stuck to somewhere in this region. Um, now we just have the rem last remaining function, which if we rearrange this and subtract X from both sides, we have negative X plus 150. So up here somewhere we're gonna have 150. Um, that's our intercept, and it's going to be decreasing something like this, and somehow that's going to form three corner points. Okay, well we know, so our feasible region would have to be here because we're talking about y being less than or equal to, so less, so, so below. Well we know this corner point here, we know that that's the point 40 comma 25. Um, this point over here, all we know is that y is equal to 25, but we don't know what x is equal to. And similarly here, we know that x is 40, but we don't know what y is going to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot these three equations now that we have a better idea of what's going on. And so I'm going to plot, uh, well, y equals 40. Um, excuse me, y equals 25. Now I can't really plot x equals 40, so I'm just going to set that up in my window um, as I go. Uh, so, and then the next thing I'm going to plot is the line negative x plus 150. Okay, so I'm going to set my window to go from 40 to, um, let's just go at least maybe 100. And my y max, or my y min going from a minimum of 25. And let's just go all the way up to, let's just say, um, 100 as well. So that we make sure we get the graph in the window. So there's my y equals 25. There's my line cutting through. Now, it looks like this is x equals 40, and it looks like it's going to cut somewhere up here, and it's going to cut somewhere over here. So I'm going to set my y max to be a little higher, maybe 125. And I'm going to set my x max to be a little bit bigger, 125. And I'm going to graph that. OK, so there we go. There's our intersection point that we want. We want that point right there. Well, I can get that by just figuring out what the output is on this line when x is 40. So I'm going to come over to second trace value.